All right, I'm really pumped because this is a question we get all the time. Actually, no, we don't. Um, we don't get this question all the time because nobody knows that we do this. This is probably one of the things that we are like, uh, one of the th things that we used to really hold close to the chest before we started doing album sales. Now that we do album sales, this doesn't matter because we don't do this anymore at weddings. Um, but what we used to do uh, was, and I'm going to show you, it's really cool, I'm going to take you behind the scenes at an actual wedding of us doing this, but what we do is we actually used to give a same day album. So not just same day slideshow, I'm going to walk you through right now how to do the same day uh, slideshow, then I'm going to also walk you through how to do the same day album that absolutely blows clients away. And when I say like blows them away, like tears of joy, hugs, embraces, like so uh, the response is so, so amazing that they can't help but tell their friends about the experience that we've given. And I know that like us, and I don't remember who did it before, but are the only photographers I've ever seen in the world to ever do it. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to do a same day slideshow. One of the things that I really love the most about this slideshow is it absolutely blows people away every single time. There's always weddings where people come up to us and they're like, I've never seen that before. The fact that you've already turned these photos around so quickly is absolutely blowing my mind. And so the slideshow is a great way to add that extra little bit to your client experience. It's also an amazing way to be able to wow clients and create raving fans, which we are 100% on board and always try to do with our brand. Create raving fans even though they may not be the ones that hired us. We always get people that come back to us for inquiries in our inquiries and say they mentioned the same day reception slideshow. They couldn't believe how quickly we got back those photos to them. They can't believe the way in which um, they, they were able to experience the photos at the reception before they even got, they even left. And that means the absolute world to us. So this is probably one of the many of our favorite marketing tools that we do. And that's just the slideshow. The album takes it to a whole nother level, like not even kidding. I mean, like raises the bar to a whole nother level um, because for the past five years, I feel like everybody's been doing the slideshow. Nobody's doing the album. Uh, so if you are on YouTube, make sure you go over to our shop and check that out where you could purchase how to make the same day album. But for right now, I hope you enjoy the same day slideshow. Now, um, same day slideshows are really, really simple. One of the best things that you could use for that, uh, I would say number one is any kind of computer. We take a large computer, like our, a large iMac. Sometimes we do it on a projector and we have a projector screen and everything like that. I'll let you know the, the equipment that we use for that, what kind of projector, because we used to use a really large projector. Now we use like a pocket projector. That's really easy. The quality isn't the greatest as far as coloring, but the quality as far as the picture is good and the lumens are high, but the coloring is a little bit off. And so if you want to um, just do a little bit more research on a pocket projector, that could be really great. We use a 27 inch iMac to play most of them, um, which makes it really, really easy for us to be able to set it up on a cocktail table. And that's super easy. Now I'll break it down for you. We use um, just like two photographer setup. I do this also by myself. One of the best ways to do this is one, to use this Lexar 4Bay ingester. It is specifically called, let me look it up here. This one is actually the Lexar Workflow HR2 4Bay Thunderbolt and USB 3.0. You want it to be as fast as possible. So you don't want to get a USB 2.0. You definitely want a Thunderbolt or USB 3.0 because you want it to be as quick as possible, especially when you're dealing with a wedding. And the reason why I love this is because it actually is interchangeable. So we use SD cards. When we used to shoot Canon, we used CF cards. So I could interchange these. Let's say you use both at a wedding. You use different cameras. You can do that, you plug and play, and it uploads four at a time, not just one card at a time, which is a huge, huge, huge time saver. Because, so a lot of people, when they do slideshows uh, at weddings, they'll say, just do your JPEGs. I would say, upload your RAWs, I don't really care. Um, it's worked for us every, we have literally done this since our very first wedding in 2013. Very first wedding we ever shot, we did this slideshow for them and we've been doing it every single wedding ever since, even weddings that I've shot by myself. So here's the workflow for it. 
The, the ceremony is now over. You've done all their pictures and now you're going to the reception. Generally during the reception, I'll kind of eat in a little back room. And as I do that, I've already started the ingestion part, uh, in, ingesting the photos uh, section of it. As soon as I get to the reception, I find a place to set up my bag, turn on the computer, begin ingesting the photos, go from there, and then I'll go back out and start shooting stuff. So like you can do details, you can do uh, the first dance, you could do all of those stuff. I try to get as much as I can ingested before then. And then I use a program called Photo Mechanic, okay? So let's talk a little bit about Photo Mechanic down here. So we're gonna go behind the scenes and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I would do that. So let's say, so we're gonna look at Maggie and Ben's wedding here. So let's say that I have started their wedding. Uh, I organize it so I have um, original cards, JPEGs, all those things, wedding, and then I have an ingested folder. Uh, it'll automatically ask me if I want to when I go to ingest. So I'll go up here to ingest. Uh, I'll make sure, so these are my settings when I ingest for a wedding. It'll have the cards right in here. Uh, what I do is I check change my primary destination to be the output folder. So it's gonna go desktop, Maggie and Ben, original cards, wedding, ingested. This is where all of them are gonna show up right in here. I'll come in here to Maggie and Ben's wedding. I'll change the sequence to 001, go from there. Uh, and then I'll press, press ingest. So this is if generally something shows up, like so when I put in a card, it's gonna show up right here. Click on that, press ingest, and that's gonna be where, that's the source disk. Since it says no source disk because I don't have a memory card plugged in here. Now what I'm gonna do is go really quickly through. I'm gonna go to capture time and order it by capture time here in Photo Mechanic. And these are all raw files, but what I love about Photo Mechanic is that they're lightning fast still. So I'm gonna go through here, and then I'm just gonna tag the ones that I want with a T, T, I'm just gonna tag some of these since I've already created it. T, come here, T, T, let's say I want some of these. Go T, and then I generally like to keep it to, I. it's crazy, I'll actually call in about 300 photos, and it's pretty consistent, about 300 photos every time. Once I get the 300 I like, I'll come up here to tagged. It's gonna show these, and then I'm gonna change these into a different folder. So come up here, drag these into this cold folders, like so, and then from there, I'm gonna take this cold folder and I'm gonna drag it into Lightroom. And in Lightroom, it's gonna say, okay, um, I've added these. Now here's the key, like this is a really awesome key um, that you need to pay attention to. So I automatically, so you'll notice, so let's come up here to the develop module and let's go to reset. Uh, this is what the files look like, right? Like these are what a raw file looks like typically. Once we add in our uh, this is kind of our, where is it, uh, new portrait. This is our default preset that gets put onto everyone. What I do, so here's what you should do. Regardless of what kind of camera that you use, uh, you should have a default preset. So once, what makes this really, really quick for us is that the raw files, as soon as they're uploaded into Lightroom, Lightroom puts our default preset across the board on all of those files, regardless of what camera style it is. So. Since I've come here and I know that this is shot on my Nikon D750, in order to set that up for you guys, come here to, um, to create whatever your base is and then come up here to default um, and then it's set default settings. And so then it's gonna come in, it's gonna say, you wanna make this the default preset that's added to every single Nikon D750 photo that's uploaded into Lightroom and I wanna say yes. That's what I wanna do, so update current settings. Right, so then now, all, every single time you open up Lightroom and add a Nikon D750 photo, that your preset is automatically gonna be applied. You don't have to click. Now all you have to do is just change the basic panel or whatever you wanna change there for that you normally change. You don't have to add that preset. So now we shoot with Fuji and Nikon. I have one that automatically does that and makes the appropriate changes for Fuji. Um, and so like, I don't have to go in there and change for every Fuji file, it's automatically changed in there. So that's a really good way to do it. So let's say like you generally shoot a little bit darker, you might wanna bump up exposure, bump the contrast, I don't know what you wanna do, drop the shadows, do any of that stuff, this looks terrible, that's not how I would do it, but if that's how you do it, then great. And then now come up here to set defaults, it's gonna make this change every single time you upload a Nikon D750 photo. Now, I'm gonna go back to the way I had it before we did that. Um, so this is what our final look like right here. 
Now, what I then will do is I do, I go through. So this is actually the specific slideshow that I made for them. It had 65 images. I brought it down. And what I do is I'll go through and I'll edit those photos really quickly. Because our preset is automatically added to it, I don't have to do much to these photos. Um, I just have to change them up a little bit. And this is just a really nice way to make it super simple. Like I'm just changing small things. Um, that won't take me a long time at all to do and then I'm going on to the next photo going on to the next photo going on to the next photo two starring for the slideshow but then also five starring for the album that we're gonna create a little bit later uh, if I want to I could also go back and just five star later if I wanted to do that um, which is what I do sometimes but really really easy coming through here and there's two starring these photos so that uh, they're ready for the slideshow now, what I'll do here, a lot of people then export. I don't export, like some people use Animoto for their slideshow, I don't do that. I come up here to slideshow, uh, and then I will go straight from the slideshow folder. Uh, I generally change up the logo because I want my logo. There's also like three and four stars here. I delete that because I don't want people to see that I've two starred some photos, five starred other photos. I'll come up here, double click, use the graphical template, and I'll go to where our uh, our thing is in Dropbox. Ours is here, branding, logo files, and it's white. Full logo white. And I generally bring that in, make it a little bit bigger so that it's across on some of these like this so people can see. I then come down in my, my slideshow area, change this to about two seconds, change this to 1.8 seconds. So it makes it super easy. And then I will command A, click all of these, and then click play. And what it's going to do is it's going to prepare the slideshow for me. Some computers will take a lot longer than others. And then I'll bring this out to a spot. Like I'll bring a cocktail table around to the, um, I'll bring a cocktail table over to an outlet, set up my iMac, my 27 inch iMac, play the slideshow from there, and let it run throughout the night. Some things that you can also do. Uh, that are really nice that some people like to do are bring um, so they'll bring their business cards put their business cards down so people can see those as well and then now if you want to take it a step further what some people like to do is put their photos on an iPad and pass that around to some of their clients and you can totally do that so let me show you guys how uh, how to do that now so like let's say I wanted to come through what I would do is I would come up here I would click all of these photos here in Lightroom, go to export, and then export them on a really quick setting. So maybe we'll go to export, uh, and then we'll call this slideshow, uh, and this one is for smart slides, but maybe we'll go up here and we'll create a subfolder and we'll say slideshow. We can leave that there if we want. This one's going to be super small, so we're not going to resize anything. You can also bring the quality down if you want to a little bit. This resolution is only going to be 72 um, DPI resize for height and width you don't really have to resize at all uh, if you don't want to and then I'm gonna come down on the quality a little bit because it doesn't have to be much and to keep my file size small so then I'm gonna export into here go ahead and do that alright so now that we have the slideshow photos just chosen what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in our iPad now so the iPad is plugged in I'm gonna bring that up in iTunes and then I'm gonna come over here to sync photos and it's gonna say copy photos from where I'm gonna say choose photos desktop slideshow open so it's gonna open those 65 photos and I'm gonna push apply and it's gonna yeah remove my photos I don't care um, so one of the great things to think about is also just using an iPad. If you're going to use an iPad, only use that iPad for these albums. One, so that you don't have crazy information on there if somebody were to steal it um, because people are idiots. Um, but then also so that nobody swipes through some of the other things that you might possibly have on there. So what you could do, uh, one of the great things you can do is you can um, lock your iPad as well. Now that the photos are on the iPad, what we're going to do is we're going to set up your iPad to show to, to be a almost like a picture frame, even if it's locked, okay, which is a great feature so that nobody can kind of go through your photos as you uh, as they have your iPad and they can't unlock it, which is great. They can only see it as a picture frame. So follow me on the iPad here. What we're going to end up doing is going into your settings. Okay, now as we go into the settings, uh, of course, what we want to do is want to make sure that... Um, your brightness is turned on, auto lock is never, so that it never turns itself off. Like that's a big deal. 
um, so that people can't, uh, so that it doesn't turn off uh, on its own while people are watching the slideshow. Now what we're going to end up doing is we're going to go to um, our, our photos and then we're going to create a new one and this one's going to be called uh, slideshow. Boom, and it's going to ask us to save it. And then we're going to want the photos that are included. Now we can see that these are all the photos that I uploaded. And so I'm going to just slide my hand across and then I'm going to go down. And the great thing is if you hold down and then just slide, it just selects all of them for you. So and then I'm going to go there and then I'm going to click done and it's going to add all of those to the slideshow as we've seen here. So all of those are added to the slideshow. Up here, if I were to go to slideshow, it would have it. The only bad thing is I, um, if people touched it, they can close it out. Um, the options don't change much. You have it on repeat. You can change the theme. In order to really have it so that you can, uh, that you can customize it and then people can not kind of access your iPad is to go into the settings is we're gonna have to go to general and we're gonna have to use something called guided access. And what guided access does is limits the usage to only particular apps. So if you had a different slideshow app, you can limit uh, usage to just that. Or if you kind of take the advice that I was saying and get an iPad specifically for weddings, then you can just limit the um, you could just limit their access to i to photos. Uh, and so then from there you would go into general, and then from general you'd go down to accessibility. Uh, so uh, right here, accessibility, and from accessibility go down to guided access, turn it on. So usually it's disabled. Enable it. Passcode settings. I put ours on Touch ID so that it's, it's by my thumb only, and then no time limits. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to the Photos app here, and then uh, we're going to go to our slideshow, start up the slideshow, and then click the home button one, two, three times, and it's going to bring up a folder that's going to bring up this, this kind of like area, and it's going to say, how do you want to do this? There's different hardware buttons and options. Um, th so whatever the hardware button does, which is the kind of the main home button, that's going to bring up what you want it to bring up if that's pushed. Um, I don't really push it, put it on much. And then now I'm going to go up here to start. And so then I'm going to, it's going to make me put in my passcode, uh, which is what it is. And you guys can see what it is. So if you ever have my iPad, don't take my passcode. But now I can't go anywhere else. Um, now, if I go to done, I can go through the photos, which is why I suggest you have just an iPad for this. But generally people won't for the most part. But they can't access anywhere so I'm putting the home screen right now and the home screen is not taking me home it's keeping me in the slideshow so that's a really great way to be able to lock the iPad screen to pass the iPad around at the wedding just keep an eye on it make sure nobody kind of pockets the iPad or whatever but it's a great way to have the slideshow so people can see it and so people can pass it around and you want to of course present it to your bride and groom now um, I hope that that's been helpful for you guys in creating same-day slideshows uh, I know it's very beneficial for us. See, look, I can't even click the power button on this guided access. You can only look at photos. So I know that this has been very beneficial for us at weddings. And so we're going to continue to do it. Uh, now, um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let us know, especially you guys on YouTube. Make sure that you like this. If this was helpful for you, make sure you share it with your friends. Mash that like button. Give us a follow, put the bell on, all the above. Uh, now, if you want to see how we make same day albums, make sure you head over to our shop with the link below and then be able to purchase that to see how to make same day albums for your clients and absolutely blow them away.